Hi everybody! In this lecture we are going to take a closer look at some of the foundational movements, artists, and ideas that have paved the way for new media art. Today we will focus on Marcel Duchamp, John Cage, and the Fluxus art movement. As a quick review from the previous lecture, we began by looking at early technological inventions within early photography. Because new media art is tied to time-based media, we looked at the rapid technological developments within early photography during the 19th century. In particular, we looked at daguerreotypes, calotypes, cyanotypes, photograms, and several other examples. We also looked at early film, especially the cinematic advances made by the Russian filmmaker Sergei Eisenstein, who perfected the art of cinematic montage. And lastly, we discussed the motivations of the Futurists, a radical group of Italian artists active before the outbreak of World War I. Influenced by new technologies, the Futurists were enamored with the idea of speed, movement, and progress. Today, we will begin by looking at another influential art movement known as Dada. Dada began in Zurich, Switzerland, as a reaction to World War I. It was a movement centered on the idea of the absurd, and its practitioners encompassed art, literature, theater, and music. Cubism, Futurism, Constructivism, and Expressionism are some of the previous art movements that influenced the Dada artists, who desired to upend the bourgeoisie sensibilities. They asked difficult questions about society, the role of the artist, and the very purpose of art. By the time that Surrealism emerged in the 1920s, Dada had all but disappeared. In this week's module, you'll find a link to the Dada Manifesto for you to read, but here's a snippet to give you a sense of their objectives. The magic of a word, Dada, which has brought journalists to the gates of a world unforeseen, is of no importance to us. To put out a manifesto, you must want A, B, C. To fulminate against one, two, three. To fly into a rage and sharpen your wings to conquer and disseminate little ABCs and big ABCs. To sign, shout, swear. To organize prose into a form of absolute and irrefutable evidence. To prove your non plus ultra and maintain that novelty resembles life, just as the latest appearance of some whore proves the essence of God. Some of the key artists associated with Dada include Man Ray, as we see in this slide, Hannah Hawk, seen here, and of course, Marcel Duchamp. If you took the history of contemporary art with me last semester, you're already aware of Duchamp's influence. The British pop artist Richard Hamilton summarized the scope of Duchamp's influence, stating, All the branches put out by Duchamp have borne fruit. So widespread have been the effects of his life that no individual may lay claim to his heir. No one has his scope or restraint. All contemporary artists, including new media artists, have been impacted by his iconoclastic nature. In this collage by Hamilton, you can see similarities with collages made by earlier Dada artists, especially Hannah Hake. Here, Hamilton offered a light critique of consumer culture by fabricating a scene composed of advertisements. Returning to the work of Marcel Duchamp, this French artist was purported to have been very handsome and wildly charismatic. He was hugely influential and had great intellect, and he was more interested in creating works that were more cerebral than beautiful. He rejected quote-unquote retinal art, by which he meant art that intended only to please the eye. He abandoned painting to quote, put art back in the service of the mind. In 1912, Duchamp spent the summer making paintings of machines that he created. The passage from Virgin Bride, seen here, represented the body of a woman in mechanical terms with a system of elaborate anatomical plumbing symbolizing the coital act. Duchamp had seen a show of futurist works in Paris, 1912. And you can see a connection between his work and this one by Giacomo Bala. Yet, unlike the Futurist, Duchamp's works expressed disillusionment and satire. Nude, Descending a Staircase, seen here, demonstrates Duchamp's early inquiries into the nature of art. Cubist faceting meets the Futurist sense of movement in this painting. 
nude, and three other paintings were included and sold at the 1912 Armory Show in New York. Duchamp became famous instantly despite attacks from the press for his work in the show. The following year, Duchamp invented the ready-made, which was defined by the surrealist André Breton as, quote, manufactured objects promoted to the dignity of art through the choice of the artist, end quote. The ready-mades proved to the art world that art could be anything, anywhere. Take, for example, some of Duchamp's examples, a bottle rack and a urinal. Writing much later, Duchamp stated, What I have in mind is that art may be bad, good, or indifferent, but whatever adjective is used, we must call it art, and bad art is still art in the same way that a bad emotion is still an emotion. Good or bad, Duchamp believed that artists were uniquely able to define and create art. Duchamp claimed the ready-mades were guided by complete visual indifference, or anesthesia as he called it, meaning the absence of good or bad taste. The conception or discovery of the object created the work, not the inherent qualities of the objects themselves. Most scandalous among his ready-mades was his so-called fountain from 1917. Duchamp redefined art, and he made film too. With the help of fellow Dada artist Man Ray, he made anemic cinema by filming nine rotating cardboard discs with spirals drawn on them and ten rotating discs inscribed with verbal puns. Please watch the video linked on this page. Now, to our eyes, this short film may appear rather dull, but it's important to remember the context and this work's place in early film history paving the way for op art, kinetic art, installation, and multimedia art, i.e. new media art. Duchamp worked across different media throughout his lifetime, emphasizing that art is about the idea, not the form it takes. Even when he made paintings, as we see here, Duchamp's output imposed a sense of distance between his art and the commercial aspect of art making. Let's turn our attention now to Fluxus a loose collective of artists, sculptors, painters, poets, and performance artists that started around 1962. This group believed that art and life could not be separated, and performance art was perhaps the best vehicle to illustrate this union. There was no discernible style among the Fluxus group, but rather a shared feeling of revulsion about the commodification of art. Please read the Fluxus Manifesto in, the in this week's module on Canvas, an excerpt here states, purge the world of bourgeoisie sickness, intellectual, professional, and commercialized culture. Purge the world of dead art, imitation, artificial art, abstract art, illusionistic art, mathematical art. Purge the world of Europeanism. Promote a revolutionary flood and tide in art. Promote living art anti-art, promote non-art reality to be fully grasped by all peoples, not only critics, dilettantes, and professionals. By the 1960s, the Fluxus group had created an oeuvre of films called Flux Films. Films in the Flux Film Anthology were shown, sometimes on a continuous loop, during events and happenings centered in the New York City avant-garde art scene. These works uphold the values of the Fluxus movement, particularly playfulness and humor, and many of the films were considered a critique of more mainstream film. Please watch the three films linked on this page. As you watch these films, consider how these works embody these ideals of the Fluxus group. Finally, we will turn our attention to the American composer, writer, and theorist John Cage. Cage created experimental works in music as abstract expressionism was gaining momentum in the United States. He was very influenced by Eastern religions, especially the I Ching, the Taoist Book of Changes. Chance played a pivotal role in his compositions, which served to challenge ideas about authorship in art. He used unconventional objects such as kitchen tools, metal sheets, common things around the house, and silence itself to force audiences to listen more deeply and expand their idea of music, composition, and noise. Throughout his career, he collaborated with many people, including Merce Cunningham, the American dancer and choreographer, as well as American artist Robert Rauschenberg. 
Cage influenced many artists, in part through his teaching, first at the Black Mountain College in North Carolina and then at the New School in New York City. Cage created 4 minutes 33 seconds while he was at Black Mountain College. A single musician enters the stage, prepares the instrument, initially a piano, but other instruments have been used, and then sits in absolute silence for the full duration of the piece. That's right, 4 minutes and 33 seconds. The sounds of the surroundings and audience members become the music itself. The piece was first performed in an outdoor amphitheater in Woodstock, New York, as part of a recital of contemporary piano compositions. The sheer spontaneity of 4 minutes 33 seconds was an important precursor to Alan Caprow's happenings. Cage referred to his works as scores, and this is the score for piano piece for David Tudor No. 2 from 1960. Open the keyboard without making from the operation any sound that is audible to you. Try as many times as you like. Minimal by design, these scores availed themselves to interpretation and chance, tenants later embraced by the Fluxus group. And also seen in the happenings, especially those orchestrated by Alan Capra, who studied under Cage at the New School. For Cage's scripts, Capra's happenings and Duchamp's attack on the meaning of art, the viewer is integral to completing or finding the meaning of the artwork itself. After viewing this presentation, you should understand Marcel Duchamp's contributions to art during the 20th century and beyond, be able to identify the beliefs of the Fluxus group in films from the Flux Film Anthology, and place the work of John Cage within the context of new media art. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody.